Hey, what's up team? We back at it. It's Joe Mill here with Killer Miller Q and we got another good cook coming today. We're going to be playing with some dino ribs. That's right. Beef ribs, beef plate ribs, whatever you've seen them in the store. The big three bones. We're going to do this Fred Flintstone style. Hold tight. I'm going to show you what we got working. Alright team, so you've seen it already. We're gonna be playing around with these beef plate ribs. Uh, I got these already looking good. I gotta show you how we got here. Only had a little bit of prep, but uh, hold tight. Alright, I wanted to bring you in here so you can see these things bright and early in the morning. We're gonna get these babies seasoned up, trimmed up, and then let them hang out while we slip in a workout and kind of knock out some house stuff, and then we'll get in here for a cook a little bit later. Um, these are your beef plate ribs or your dino ribs. You can check out a little bit of marbling over here. These are choice, but uh, they look pretty good. Got these from my local butcher. It's about the only place I can find them. Um, not a whole lot that we're going to do with these. When you're looking for these, you want to get the, the, they look for the ones with the three bone. These are going to change dramatically once we get to cooking as far as the way that they're going to end up looking. But um, this is an optional step. For me, much like when I'm doing brisket and stuff like that, I like to try to get this uh, fat off of here. There is a layer, of, a layer of silver skin under here as well, and I want to get rid of that and expose me to meat so that way I can get me a little bit of bark on these. Hopefully these come out nice and dark uh, like a brisket, and uh, from there we'll like be good that. to go. All right, this is pretty good for me. Obviously, we got a couple places where we still got some good amount of fat in there, but we got most of that silver skin off of the top, most of that fat cap. Didn't take off a whole lot of meat, but I don't want to gouge in there too close. I don't want to get too close to the bones. Because at the end of the day, this baby do get delicate on the back end. So pretty much as you kind of look at these scraps that I took off, pretty much it wasn't a whole lot of meat. The technique that I use is obviously you want to start with a nice sharp knife. I use this boning knife. It's got a little bit of curve to it. And then I try to go in long strokes with the grain. Once I can sneak my knife up under there real nice and thin, I work my way backwards, get me a flap of fat pull up on that fat and then I'll always curve my knife somewhat upward as I'm going through to cut through on that long line. So that way for the most part I get long strips kind of like this one. That's all the meat that I'm going to get out of there so nothing too too much. So that way we don't gouge into it too much but we can get that fat cap off of there. So pretty much that's about all we really need to do. I'm going to flip these babies over. I'm not using the binder today. These are going to have plenty of time to hang out so I'm going to let them just chill. I'm not going to remove this uh, membrane like I do on pork ribs. These babies get pretty flimsy by the end, so this membrane holds on a little bit. Hopefully, keep these things somewhat together. So we're gonna leave that. Uh, I'm gonna lightly season this side along with the edges and um, hit the top. Really don't have to do the this side so much if you don't want to, but I always like to keep it pretty. So I'll go light, but I'll hit it with a little something. Today we're gonna be using the Holy Cow Meat Church Rub. One of my favorites on uh, pork. It's got a lot of pepper and bite to it, so I think this should give me a nice bark. Uh, I'm gonna season this baby up. I'll bring you back so you can take a peek at it before I put her to sleep, and then we're gonna get into it. Ah, just like that. We got this baby taken care of. Hit it up with a little bit of this uh, Holy Cow. One of my favorites, like I said, my meat church rub. Um, basically, went ahead and hit that backside lightly. Hit all the edges first, which I like to do. Then that way you can also clean up on your board with whatever is left. And then a nice shot on top. Don't be afraid to put a good amount of rub on this meat. This is a thick piece of meat. I'm looking at about a five pounder on these dino ribs today. So uh, not afraid to put a good amount of rub on there. I'm gonna let this hang out for a second while I grab this saran wrap. I'm gonna wrap this baby up good. I'm gonna throw it in the fridge and let it hang out until later on. All right, we got her all wrapped up. Not like you needed to see how to saran wrap something or nothing like that, but the one thing I will say is I do like using this saran wrap on some of these bigger pieces of meat where I can't put it directly into a bowl or something with a lid. One thing I like about it, I already got this seasoned up. When I bring this back out, uh, when it's time to actually get going with the cooking, I'm going to leave it in this saran wrap to come up the temp. It's going to keep all my moisture right there inside the pack and all my rub and everything stays right on versus a lot of times when I sit it out on the pan, I come back, you got a lot of moisture in the pan, a lot of your rub has fell off, everything's staying intact with it. I'm going to let it sweat out right in here and then this will come off real nice and easy. I'll put it directly on the pit. I'll see you back here in a couple hours. Okay, so now you know exactly what we did to get here. Like I told you, I love the saran wrap. These babies been coming up to temp right out here in the cooker. They look tight. 
they're still holding on all of my juices are still in here and then with that said my rub is also all intact with the meat so basically I already got my uh, smoker already coming up to temp my plan is today and the hardest part is going to be keeping my heat down with it being already 100 plus out here today um, i want to cook at about 250 take these nice and easy i'm gonna be using some pecan wood might add just a little bit of oak in there just for a little mix up but uh, we're gonna take these nice and slow this is about a five pound uh beef plate rib here so i'm expecting that this is at least gonna be about a six hour cook i want to get a nice dark bark on here so i almost toyed with the idea just letting them go the whole time but i can already tell by how late i'm getting started i'm gonna run out of daylight so what i'm gonna do is i'm still gonna wrap treat it pretty much like a brisket i'm gonna pretty much let it go to color ish initially on i'm not gonna touch them for about the first three or four hours then i'll start light spritzing once they get good and dark, my guess is probably going to be about 170, 175 ish, something like that. I'm going to wrap them in butcher paper. I'll add just a little bit of tallow, and then we're going to take them all the way up until they real probe tender. We might even go from somewhere around 205, 207, something like that. Other than that, this is going to be an easy cook. This should be good eating. We got prime plate ribs over here. Hold tight. I'll let you see what they look like in the pack, and we're going straight to the cook. Okay, okay, not a whole lot to see here. We got meat and saran wrap. Main thing is, I just want to show you what they look like after they've been sweating out for a while. All my juice is still on the meat. I love that. Everything is nice and intact. Remember, we didn't use a binder or anything. These just been hanging out for probably two, three hours in the refrigerator and then just brought them up to temp. We're going straight over to the smoker. Okay, okay. We got this baby on. She looks good and peppery. I'm gonna like that. Uh, don't worry about that over there. That's just a little something to play with. A little pit master privilege. I went with the biggest area, more or less, to the fire. And we down here on my bottom rack. I just went ahead and took the big one out, or the top one out, just so we can get a better view of everything. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put them in here and let them go to sleep. I'll see you back in a couple hours. We'll take a peek at it. Hey, before we get too far, I want to jump in here and let you know if you are new to the channel. I appreciate you following along today. Make sure you hit that bottom right corner, like, and subscribe everybody else that's been following along we got another good cook going if you haven't already follow me on ig killer miller q all together and other than that let's get back to the work all right team i wanted to bring you in so we're going to talk about some quick fire management out here in this blazing heat the hardest thing for me is i need to keep these temps down but i need to keep me a cold bed so um don't ever forget man leave this door open a little bit let this thing get nice and flaming before you close it and that's another easy way to make sure that you always keep some clean smoke rolling but um We've been cool. It's been actually between 225, 250, which I'm super cool with. Um, I wouldn't have brought you in I'm only at about two hours and 10 minutes, but I just want you to peek at this thing. It's starting to get a little dry back or, 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 or far stuff, dry, draw back. And it's also starting to dry out a little bit, but I'm literally not going to touch it. But all I wanted to see or to more or less bring you in the show was that uh, look how much this thing is changing before. Initially, when we saw this before and initially, it was gone completely covered with meat and now you're starting to see that draw back on the bone I'm starting to get a little bit of that darkness maybe at about the uh three four hour mark i'll actually come in here and i'll give it a little spritz but other than that i'm gonna let it keep rolling all right team i wanted to bring you back we have four hours 10 minutes we've been rolling along i have found myself in that 250 to 225 range uh, more or less the whole cook we still rolling along good with a nice looking split on there. So um, we're going to let it keep going. Let's check out this meat. Check out that drawback on this bones or nose bones. Now we starting to look like a dino rib. Hopefully these babies will stay on the whole time. What I wanted to do was see if I needed any moisture on here now that we at the four hour mark. We really don't look too bad. Um, and then I want to use my uh, Thermo Pro to see if I need to actually uh, pump it up or check it out in temp. Now, one thing you probably didn't see me if you've been following along, I had the red Thermo Pen the whole time. The nice people with Thermo Pen notice I ain't even uh, took that remove off yet. That's old school. Um, the nice people with Thermo Pen sent me out, made me an ambassador. So now I got a uh, code that I'll throw in there at the bottom to actually save you a little money off if you're interested. This has always been my tell true. As far as checking my meats, whenever I would use my probe off of my uh, wireless thermometer or when I'm on my um, pellet grill and I use it, uh, whenever, I always test with a quick little Thermo Pro or Insta Read more or less. But I'm kind of curious just where we at on temperature and how we sitting. 
it slid in there respectfully easy looks like we had about 180 one thing I like about this one I don't even have an on off button pretty much as soon as you push it or open it up 180 down here as well I did rotate this one time it'll automatically turn on and everything from there the other thing I like is it's got a nice big readout so from far away you can tell the temperature so it looks like I'm out of 180 this doesn't look bad I am definitely losing daylight out here you can see the stage and everything also gonna bring in that nice close-up you can get a chance to check out uh, the meat and everything up front but uh, I'm losing daylight I might go ahead and wrap this thing I'm really not too mad at it right now let me think about it we're gonna come right back all right I didn't thought about it I gave it a quarter turn so now we kind of facing more or less on I'm gonna give it a light spritzing just in a couple of these areas where it looks like it's kind of moistening other than that I'm about to let this thing keep running sometimes you just gotta roll with it I'm gonna lose daylight anyway so we'll see okay see that glow it's been about four hours 50 minutes I just kicked the temp up as I just threw a log in I'm good with this color I got me a little bit of bark formation got a decently dark look I said I wanted to get a temp at it you know what let me grab my, my thermal pro and let me check it out okay I figure let's at least see where we at let me try to go more or less between the bones we kicked up a little bit 187 I'm I, I like that you know I was thinking about going like 190 or so and getting this thing like I said completely black and then just wrapping for a little bit okay okay 200 this did push in pretty decent too you know you got to take your time with these beef ribs man they got a lot of connective tissue and stuff like that that needs to render out so um i don't mind some people go on a rack the whole time up to 207 205 something like that i'm not mad at going all the way to 180 i like where we have right now i really don't let it spritz one time we're gonna leave it exactly where it's at uh we about to grab this off of here and we're gonna see if we can make this transition together like always i i like using my um blackstone spatula we're gonna see if we can make this walk together over to my staging area oh uh, we made it all right you see i already got some tallow down i'm about to put this face down i'm about to rack these babies up you can see a little bit more of that bark I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to stick my meat probe or my meat stick probe in there and uh, we're going to monitor them out until they get to about 200 and then I'll start checking them out from there. Okay, I got this baby wrapped up. I'm going to use a single layer of wrap but I did make sure I had tons of paper so I can get a good roll over. Steel bone side down, wrapped up in this butcher paper. You saw a little bit of tallow that was on there. Went ahead and added my meat stick X in there right between the bones so I can give me a good reading. I'll check right, it out when I get about fun. five hours, 45 minutes, and we've been running straight along. And it's saying that I'm about at 205. So I want to see. That, didn't, that, that was pretty effortlessly right there. I'm going to double check it with my Thermal Pro. And I'm definitely getting 205. And that felt pretty good. Yeah, that didn't, that didn't fight me right there at all. We're going to pull these off. I'm going to bring these in, pop them open for a second just to kind of break that cook up and uh, let them breathe and go ahead and let them rest for a little bit and we'll get a taste. Okay, team, it's been about six and a half hours. I done lost all my daylight, but with that said, we got this cook done. These babies is probe tender. I'm feeling good about the result. I haven't looked at it, so we're going to do this thing together. At the end of the day, my cook roughly took about six hours, a little inside of six hours on the whole cook time. The last hour or so, I bumped it up to around 325 to go ahead and get it done once I had it wrapped. I think I wrapped roughly a little around 180-ish uh, or so. Took it all the way up to 205. Like I said, we probed tender. This baby is completely saturated. We added a little bit of tallow when we wrapped it up, but nowhere near the amount of oil that you see on here now. Both of my probes came in great. I used the uh, Thermal Pro like I always do to kind of check things out, make sure I'm 100. 
But with that said, I used the meat stick for a whole other cook that didn't have anything to do with what we did today. But then on the back end, I actually stuck the meat stick in there once I wrapped up. Gave me a good idea where I was at on ambient temperature and also let me know when to go in there and check. So at the end of the day, love both of these things. I also got discount codes for you. I'll make sure I add that in there in the descriptions. But with that said, I'm going to bring you in here for a different look. Hopefully it's going to be a little bit closer. And we're going to go ahead and see what we came out with. Alright team, as promised, I'm going to bring you in here close and we're going to see if this close-up works out. And obviously, uh, we experimenting trying to bring you in here closer to what we're doing and making sure that you can actually see everything. But uh, I want you to, whoo, look at that juice coming up out of there. I want you to get a closer experience of what we got going on. I don't want to mess up everything trying to get up in here, so I'm going to just tear it down the middle. Oh, yeah. Like I said, we're getting to see this thing for the first time together. Look at that bark. I'm going to slide this over and get rid of this butcher paper. We got a whole lot of moisture. Ah, let's see if we can keep it together. Bam. I'm liking that. Look, look at this. Look at this. We got a murder show. Now, if I did enough cooking... You save this butcher paper right here. And this is how you start your fire the next time. But uh, for me, I'll be tossing that. Of course, you already know I had to lick my fingers. And I'll tell you what, that meat church is on point. That's pretty much all we did was hit it with some of this holy cow. Always a good one. Now we're going to see if I can't go ahead and get this thing a good cleaner slice. I'm going to let you see exactly what it's looking like. And we're gonna go from there. I'm gonna turn it this way. It's a little easier on my side. Let's start with this one here. As you can see, everything is kind of pulled over to the side. So I'm gonna try to get it at an angle where I can still get something on that bone. Boom, there we go. And now we got both of these two bones real close together. So we're going to see if we can sneak down between them and get a little something on those two. Boom. Now let's see what we got for these dino ribs. Check that out right there. That Lone Star never fails to produce. Woo wee Come on now. You already know I will not taste test this without you. You hold on tight. Let me get this to you. All right, I can't even tell you. My mouth is watering. I can't wait to get into these. A uh, couple things and you got a chance to see it a little close up. Hopefully that view was something good for you. Uh, we're gonna keep playing around with it. I'll make sure I dial it in a little bit more. This fat is all rendered out of there. These babies look absolutely beautiful and I love the smoke ring that's on there. Um, this is the one. This is why we left that membrane on there. We got a little something left. Let's give it a taste. I gotta quit doing this. Check out that bite. This baby is juicy, tender, roamy, and so flavorful. We won yet again. We gonna definitely have a couple more bites of this. I'm not gonna bore you as I go ahead and get my full on. I appreciate y'all kicking it with me yet again. Joe Mill here with Killer Miller Q, Black Smoke Barbecue. I'll catch y'all next week. Peace.